Yo, 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 what the deal? It's your boy X.E.L. Oh, welcome back to the channel, man. Thank you. Yes, you for coming back. But if you're new here, do me a favor and like, subscribe, hit the bell notification, and I'll let you know when I drop another video. Today, I'm going to be going over the Artoria Key Lab 61 Keys keyboard. Let's go. All right, so here it is um, laid out. Um, I have a top view of it so you can actually see the keyboard itself. I think it looks really, really nice. When I pulled out the box, I, I found a couple of cool things in here. Um, they have these like magnets that you can put on the keyboard. So um, let's say for Reaper, <laughs> uh, I can put this um, magnet on the keyboard and now I have it set up to where all my dog commands are right here for Reaper. I think that's pretty fire. And they have a couple of ones. They have one for Studio One on the other side. They have Logic, they have Pro Tools, they have Ableton Live, and they have Cubase. So that that's the DAWs that this keyboard actually covers automatically, like without doing anything really extra to get it started. Um, it does work on Cakewalk, and it, you can use it inside of FL Studio as well but they're not dedicated for those dogs, but you can still use them in there. And I will show you Cakewalk a little later on in this video. So let's get into the keyboard itself so I can show you how it looks and what things do. Let's start with the back. So you have your power switch. You can also have a DC power. Uh, here is a USB port where you can plug in a USB. It has a sustain pedal, uh, expression, some auxiliaries on it. So you can actually use this to send stuff out as well. It also has some MIDI ins and outs. And you have an option to send like your pitch, your gate out, uh, and like two modifiers on there as well. And that's just on the back of the keyboard. So we're gonna plug it in and see it light up. And once you power it on, as you see, kind of flashes some lights across the screen itself. All right, so here is the Key Lab 61 uh, MK2. Uh, this is by Autoria. So over here, you have your option for your chords, you have your pitch wheel, your mod wheel. You have other uh, pads and chords and memory over here. You have your 16 channels for your MIDI. So if you click on that, you can change your MIDI channels. So if you have a DAW that has, um, if you have like 16 channels on it, say if you're using like, uh, say if you're using contact, you can use this to change your keys, which is really cool. And of course you have your DAW commands. I showed you that nice little patch that they gave with the keyboard itself for different DAWs. Uh, you have your transport here. Here is your dial where you can change some of the things for your either your DAW or you can even go to Analog Lab and go through your categories and stuff inside of Analog Lab. And you also have a user option over here so you can change your user defaults and you can have them right over here for your user uh, parameters. So you can change those over here as well. I think that's really, really cool that they did that. All right, and you have your different parts uh, for your mixer and meters. So if you had something in here and you wanted to mix, that would be the place you would want to do it. Or if you're on the Atoria keyboard, uh, or the, the mini lab, sorry, if you're on the analog lab, you can actually use this section over here, which is really, really cool to get everything started. So you can use your user for your levels, uh, for your operators. Uh, as you see here on the screen, I am in uh, Reaper. So, all these knobs are corresponding to these knobs and faders. And as far as the keys, I like the keys. They're not as bouncy as the uh, complete, at least not to me. But I like the, the way they feel. Uh, they feel like they can sustain some, uh, some kind of punishment. Uh, but there's some things that I don't necessarily like about the keyboard. I'm not uh, fond of the hard buttons. Uh, but you know, it's something that you have to get used to if you're not used to using them. Um, and I'm not necessarily a fan of the, the metal pitch wheel and mod wheel. They just feel a little weird uh, to me, but you know, that's just me. Uh, I'm special. <laughs> but yeah, so this keyboard is a really, really good keyboard. I like the fact that it can control your DAW. Uh, I'm gonna show you it actually controlling Reaper. I'm gonna, uh, go through and see if we can get everything set up. 
All right, so let's say you want to set it up in Reaper. So you're going to go up to options. You're going to go to your preferences and you're going to scroll down to it says control OSC web and make sure you have it set on the Mackie control. So if you were going to add one, you would add and it's going to tell you what control surface you have. You want to make sure you go to the Mackie control, right? And once you're in there, you're going to choose your keyboard. So you're going to go to MIDI N2 for the key labs. And you're going to do the same for the out, the MIDI out key labs MK61, right? So if you see on this one here, I'll open it up. This is the one I have, the MIDI in and the MIDI out. Uh, and make sure this ignore fade, moves fades, uh, is make sure it's unchecked. Otherwise, like the faders and things won't work with the DAW, right? Hit OK on there. Hit apply once you do your thing on your side and then hit OK. And now your keyboard is set up. You can see this, the now the actual stop is on there now. Um, I can do a repeat. The repeat actually works on here as well. If you want to record your metronome, even your undo is on here. And it gives you an option to save. So all this is set up on the door. And if I wanted to use this uh, on this channel, as you see that meter, that fader is actually moving for number one. So I take it off and I'm just gonna double click it to put it back in place. So if I wanted to use this one, it automatically moves down on the keyboard to that track, which is track six, which is where I usually start my stuff. Uh, and you have your fader that works on here as well, which is really, really cool. And this is for like your pan. If you want to pan left or right. So all this stuff is very, very functional in this DAW. I like the fact that I can control almost everything right from here on the keyboard itself. So I don't have to keep going back and forth to like the mouse and the keyboard to, to do anything on here. I think that's really, really cool. All right, so here we are in Cakewalk. This is my light theme. If you're interested in this theme or my dark theme, I have a link below in the description that you can download these for free. So I'm gonna hit P on my keyboard just to bring up my preferences. And you want to make sure that your MIDI devices is set up so you have this uh, MIDI in and this MIDI out on. Uh, that's the way it's going to control the DAW. So you want to go to Control Surfaces right here. And you want to go and hit this Add New Controller Surface, right? So right now it's on Acted. You want it to be on Mackie Control. So this is a Mackie Control setup for this keyboard, this key lab. And you want to make sure that you have it on MIDI N. So the MIDI N is what's actually going to control the parameters for the keyboard itself. All right. Then hit OK. And now you have your Mackie control set up on here. And then you just hit apply. And then you can close this out. You have this option up here that says Mackie control. So it's set on Mackie control right now. So you want to make sure that's set on. And you want to go right here to where it says control surface properties. All right. And it'll bring up this screen. So make sure this disable handshake is checked. Uh, this will allow you to use the keyboard to do a play and stop and all that good stuff. So, all right. And I just added the analog lab so I can show you that the, the transpose does work. So the stop does work. If you hit play, it'll actually play the track. If you hit record, uh, it'll arm it and then start recording because I have mine set to auto arm even if it's not selected. And just that simple, you have the option to actually record inside of the DAW. The faders do work on here. Your pan left and right does work in here as well. So you can pan left and right on the mixing console as well. And seeing that I'm on that track, I can hit the mute and mute it if I wanted to. I can solo it if I wanted to. I can arm the track if I wanted to, right? So all these things do work inside of Cakewalk as well. I thought that was really, really cool that you can actually do that in here as well. And for my FL users, you guys should rejoice. I'm in FL uh, 21 right here on the screen. And uh, it does actually work inside of FL. 
you just have to make sure you get everything set up. So I'm gonna show you what I have set up right now. So you go to your options, go to MIDI settings. All right, once you're in MIDI settings, you wanna make sure that your KeyLab M61 is on generic control so that you'll be able to play like the keys. And you wanna have this one, this MIDI in, to actually control the DAW. So it'll let you do the transport. It'll let you do your metronome. It'll let you do your looping on here. You can actually do a record. All right, you can take off the record here, hit play. Really, really simple. And your undo works, so you can do an undo straight from the keyboard itself as well. Uh, your pads work. I haven't found a way to do the mixer on here because if I move it, it doesn't move anything. And I even have it linked down here to the track. So it doesn't move the faders um, or like the panning, uh, anything like that. None of that actually uh, seems to work. I'm not sure if I'm just doing something wrong inside of FL or it just doesn't work with it. All right. And that's how you would actually set it up inside of FL Studio uh, for this KeyLab 61. But yeah, I think this is a very, very solid keyboard. I like the way this one kind of interacts with the DAWs itself. Uh, it gives you an option for your faders and different channels you can actually add onto. You can actually arm record. Uh, you can set up your analog lab. It does come with sounds and effects um, when you actually purchase the keyboard. So yeah, I would definitely say it's a, a good buy. Shout out to the people at Zounds sending this over to me. I've been using it for a week or so now, and I really like it. Um, like I said, the only thing that I didn't necessarily like was the hard buttons. I do like the pad. The pad is very nice as well. But with that being said, that's pretty much the end of this video. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I enjoyed bringing it to you. Uh, if you have like any questions, comments, leave them below in the comment section. Uh, you know, I'll get back to you on those. But once again, this is your boy, X dot E dot. L dot O. Till next time, people. Peace.